What's up, Closer Nation? Good to see y'all here on a Wednesday. I'm trying to do my Wednesday live streams. I got some some new information has come to light, man. <laughs> got some new information for you. I want to share with you a lesson that I learned this week from a gentleman who just uh, joined my mentoring who does, you know, I'm at a point now, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to where most people who hire me as a mentor are actually more successful than I am. I can think of out of the 50 people that I personally mentor, probably 40 of them either make more money than me, run a larger business than me, or just flat out are better than me. And, and I love it. I love it. I want to celebrate success, not just with the people I work with and coach, but with just people in general. So what's up, Kimmy? What's up, Marla? I see my man Wayne Salmon's on here. Wayne, that video with you in my car and Ty Lopez, that shit was hilarious, man. Great job. Great job, man. It was totally not what I expected, man. So I, uh, I thought that was hilarious. So, so the other day I have a gentleman that joins my uh, personal coaching program. And when somebody joins that program, we usually take an hour or so to speak with the individuals to, I, I do personally, to find out where they're at in their business, where they're at in their life, because I don't just coach business, marketing, and sales anymore. I coach, you know, uh, mindset, how to be a better family man, all the things that, that I've learned throughout the years. It's not just a, a business thing. It's a overall success thing, right? And when I'm talking to this guy, I'm reading his sheet. There's this intake form that everybody has to fill out. And he puts on there that, you know, last year's company did $30 million. They're on track to do a whole hell of a lot more than that this year. And uh, I get excited. I'm like, damn, you know, this, I, I've got a few guys that have businesses that do 50 to a hundred million uh, that I personally work with, but anybody in the eight figures, man, I'm super excited because not only am I going to be able to help them, they're going to help me because I haven't done 30 million. I've done $30 million. Well, I've done almost a hundred million a year in mortgages, but that's a lot different than having a business that does 30 million, not just 30 million in sales, but a business that does 30 million in revenue, revenue versus sales, a big difference. Anyway, so I'm talking to him and he's telling me that, you know, I've hired and fired thousands of people. Sometimes I've had to, you know, let over a hundred people go in a day, uh, just because of the size of the business that they run and everything else. And I'm intrigued, you know, because every month when my personal clients come to my office and we work together, the biggest struggle that the business owners in that group and even the, the top producing salespeople that are building teams, the biggest struggle that they talk about that they're facing is how to hire better employees. And, and you know, we're in Trump's economy right now. I'm not talking politics whether you like the guy or not, but we're in Trump's economy right now. And the people who are good are already gainfully employed. The people who don't have jobs right now are literally the bottom of the barrel. And, uh, and, and I don't say that lightly and I don't say that to be negative or talk shit. It, it's true, especially here in Texas where I'm at, uh, everybody has a job even when it was, you know, Jimmy Carter's economy, everybody had a job. I mean, that's just the way that it is here in Texas. And so right now the people who don't have a job that are applying for jobs are literally the bottom of the barrel people who, you know, they're forced off of welfare, they're forced off of you know, unemployment or whatever the case. And, and it becomes harder to hire in a good economy because the best, the, the best, uh, how would I say this? The best employees are hired by some of the best corporations out there. And right now all these corporations are making ass loads of money, hand over foot, whatever that means. And they're doing a tremendous amount of business so they can afford to give you the perks. They can afford to give you the things that small business owners like me and the guys that I work with, you know, oftentimes can't afford to do. I can't afford to match 401ks and give you four weeks a year of vacation time and pay you a hundred thousand dollar salary and, and, and all that stuff that some of these big companies around here uh, are able to do. And so we have to figure out how to compete as small business owners and recruit great talent away from these big corporations or these companies that might possibly be more powerful than us. And the struggle is always, how do I find better salespeople? Uh, how do I find better workers and employees? And, and one of the, the biggest challenges we face as business owners 
is we tend to not think somebody will do the job for the amount of money that we're offering because I know that I wouldn't work for thirty or forty thousand dollars a year, and uh, and and that's just the level the the thermostat that I've set on my income in my life. But there's lots of people who will work for that and will do a damn good job of it as long as you have the right culture, as long as you have the right you know benefits, as long as you have the right you know you can work around their schedule or whatever the case may be, and they'll do super performing uh, work at that thirty to forty thousand dollar level. I know that might be for some of you in sales hard to believe, but when you're scaling a business. It doesn't even matter if it's sales training or marketing or mentoring like I do or software or whatever it still has a lot to do with you know the fact that you need people other than salespeople to back up the salespeople and run the operations and thank God I have people like Jose and Lindsay and Sabrina that have run my back-end operations Matt Ganzak's another one and AJ Roberts that run my back-end operations and do a, a hell of a job at it they're not just salespeople right and so, long story short, I'm talking with this gentleman and his $30 million you know, a year company that he's talking about, and he tells me this, man, and this, this changed my life, because when you change your mind, you change your life, and this totally changed my mind, which changed my life, and yesterday was like, this, it was like a new day in my life, like starting all over as if I was reborn as a business owner. So, give me the thumbs up. Give me some love if you want to hear the advice that he gave me. I know you business owners want to hear this for sure because it's a game changer. All right, there we go, there we go. What he said was this. He said, you should treat your employees as good, if not better, than your customers. And I, I have made, I'm, I'm human. I am, I am not a machine. I have emotions and, and I have faults and everything else. We all know there was only one perfect human to live on this planet and they hung his ass to a cross, right? I ain't trying to be perfect in any stretch of the imagination, but I've always treated employees like employees because when I was an employee, I was treated like an employee. So it's like almost like being a, a victim of abuse. If you've been abused, all you know is to abuse other people. And so when I was an employee for the bank, when I was an employee for the car wash, you know, I didn't get any extra perks and I was just treated like someone who was there to do a job. And that's always been my mindset anyway. I'm there to do a job. Now we've done a great job at creating a culture at Break Free Academy and at Hardcore Closer and at Phone Sites of all of us winning and all of us being on the same team and, and all of us being like one big happy family. But you know, over the years, unfortunately, I've had to fire a lot of people due to lack of performance and lack of ethics and lack of integrity and you know the shit you have to do as a business owner and this guy tells me that once you start treating employees better or at the minimum the same as you would treat a customer then your life as a business owner will get a lot better and he says this think about it your employees they bring you customers your employees if they're happy they make sure your customers are happy if your employees love you and are drinking the kool-aid They'll be getting the clients to love you and drink the Kool-Aid as well. And by love you, I don't just mean me. I mean the company or whatever product it is that you represent. He said when your client has an issue, you don't tell your client to go fuck themselves, right? You tell them, you don't tell your client to get back to work. You, you empathize with your client. You try to solve the problem. You try to make things better for them. If you'll start treating your employees the same way, this is what he's saying to me. Ryan, if you'll start treating your employees the same way that you treat your clients, you'll have the happiest, most productive employees on the planet. And I thought, man, I've always treated employees like employees. I never thought about treating them better or the same as I would treat my clients and customers. And it was like a, a, a switch that went off in my head and went, oh shit, that's my problem. Oh shit, that's everybody's problem. Is we treat employees like employees, which means you got to go to work, fuck your excuses, all the things that we would we would say to our employees versus trying to make them happy. Now, we're not trying to make them entitled. We're not trying to make them overly fat and happy, right? To where they're, they're lazy and shit like that. But we're trying to make sure that they're happy. They're drinking the Kool-Aid. They're excited about their job. We want them to be happy. If they have a problem, we want to help them solve it. And oftentimes, the very things that we can do, that is a Escalade with about a six inch lift. Holy shit. Gotta love Texans. The thing, the thing that, that we oftentimes do is 
we don't even ask employees if they had the power to make executive decisions what they would change. And oftentimes when your employees, they're on the front lines of shit that as a business owner, as a CEO, as an executive, or as a, a top producing leader of a team, we don't even know some of these things, some of these problems that, that exist, we don't even know that because we're not the ones dealing with them on a daily basis. So keeping in touch with your employees, asking them what do they think can be done to improve, valuing their opinion, actually looking into the advice. I know for years I worked for companies that when you gave your opinion, uh, about how things could be better, they told you to shut up, you're an idiot, and get back to work. And I, I, I'll be honest, I've kind of carried that mentality in my business, like I already know everything, whatever. But man, yesterday, it changed. And then I took it one step further. And you guys are gonna be like, Stuman, you've lost your damn mind. But I thought, what if we started treating our haters, right? The people who absolutely hate on you, talk shit, troll you, all that stuff that as someone in the, you know, a semi-public spotlight like I am, what if we started treating those people as we would treat our clients as well? Now, most of us, when someone trolls us, we talk shit back to them, we argue with them, we, we, we say fucked up shit to them or whatever the case, but what if we try to professionally make them convert from hater to fan, right? What if it, it's got to be a lot easier when somebody's trolling you to ask them, hey man, how, how can I make, how, what can I do to make you happy? How, how can I make it to where you're not so frustrated and upset? And you know what? Some people, they're just going to be frustrated and upset, but a lot of people are going to say, well, I don't like this, that, or the other. And it's going to, A, give you some personal feedback on how you can grow as a human and as a business owner, and B, it's going to tell you what vibes you're putting off that's attracting people that don't like you. Now, listen, you can't make everybody happy. And my job's not to try to make haters happy, but there's a lot of people out there who simply hate because they're misinformed or under-informed or whatever you want to want to call it. They just don't know what they don't know. And it's, it's easy instead of arguing with somebody, which is what they want because they're trying to stimulate their amygdala, which is a whole nother lesson that I could teach for hours on. But instead of trying to stimulate their amygdala and turn on that fight or flight mechanism and get them amped up and even more pissed off, why not just ask them, hey man, what can I do to make you happy? If we lived in a perfect world and you and I were best friends, what would it take to make that happen? And so yesterday I tried this. I had a guy that was talking shit about me. I had two big problems yesterday. Yesterday I had a problem with an employee and I did everything I could to make that employee happy and we ended up getting it solved. Back to work today. I also had a hater yesterday who was talking some shit behind my back. I, I don't know the guy and that that's irrelevant. But I reached out to the guy and I said, hey man, in, instead of talking behind my back, let's, let's discuss what I can do to rectify whatever situations got you mad at me. And he went, who the fuck's running Stuman's social media? And I said, no, no, it's really me. I'd send him a picture of myself. Hey man, no, it's me, you know? And uh, I left him a voicemail. I said, hey man, what I want to do is I, I just want to figure out why you're unhappy and, and, and what I did to make you upset so that maybe, maybe I can fix it. Maybe I can't, right? Maybe you leave here and you hate me even more and I'm okay with that outcome too. But you know, what can I do to, to, to change your mind? And he went on to tell me about someone that I used to be aligned with that pissed him off. And since I was aligned with that person, he was just naturally mad at me too. And I went, oh, well, I, I'm not a, aligned with that person anymore. And, and that person never worked for me. Uh, they were just a, a client, you know, and I can't control what clients do. I can, can, you know, try my best to control what employees do and, and, and what my, sales, my staff and my contractors do, but I can't control mistakes that clients make. I mean, that's just something that, that I have zero control over and I apologize that that happened to you and I just hope that that doesn't come between us anyway man you really are a changed man dude I, I'm a fan again man I, I'm sorry we went through that dude I was mind blown I was like holy shit this guy actually taught me something that's not just gonna serve me from lowering my stress levels but it's gonna serve other people too because it doesn't do anybody any good to walk around pissed off all the time it doesn't do anybody any good to make their haters hate them even more, which is the game most of us alphas, most of us are oh, yeah, tough guys play, right? And so I want you to think about this today. You know, you don't have to accommodate and make them entitled, but treating your employees and your haters the same way that you would treat your clients, if not better, will make all the difference in your business. And, you know, a lot of times a hater is a 
prospect in disguise in all reality, right? There's somebody who's talking about you. There's somebody who knows you. There just needs to be a few dots connected to get that person to understand where you're coming from and why you do things the way that you do and that you truly do want to help them. And I'm telling you, I'm on this journey now. My general manager came and sat in my office yesterday and he's like, are you sick, man? No, I'm not sick at all. What's going on? He goes, because I've never seen you handle the situations that you handled the day that you have. Like, what did you do? Did you go to counseling or, or what's the case? And I said, man, I, I met this, this guy that's our client that'll be here this month. Dude, this, this guy like said something that changed my life. And I'm forever thankful for him, man. I recommend that you follow him on Instagram. His handle on Instagram's at the greatest on the planet. The greatest on the planet. And uh, his name's John Hopper. And uh, great dude, man. Um, amazing, caring human being. And he shifted my mind, something that I've been looking for for the last decade, man. It solved a lot of my problems. And I hope this video solves a lot of your problems, too. I got to pull into the office later.